Hi, I'm Corey. Thank you for joining me for episode 11 of Flips, Flaps, and Folds. This is my second video today. I did 10 and 11 today. I got um, a little behind where I had wanted to be when my granddaughter stayed with us, which was an absolute delight, and I'm glad she did, but um, that hence the reason for two videos today. What we're going to be doing today is an over-the-edge or over-the-page fold, and I use 12 by 12 paper, but you can certainly use anything smaller. This is just a really great project if you're wanting to use up some of your 12 by 12 stash because it uses all or most of a piece of 12 by 12. And the front pocket will give you a pocket and a second back pocket if you choose to use vellum or transparency like I've done here. And the second side will give you... Um, a little flip opening. You've got a couple pages of journaling or more pockets and then a, a, either a full pocket or a double pocket like I've got here on the back side. So the top gives you two pockets and the back gives you as many pockets as you want to put on top but basically it gives you um, three to four pages of journaling space. So I've put a pocket here but you could certainly make that a journaling space. Um, and add, adding lined paper. What I used to make this is um, a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock, and I've already cut it down to seven inches simply because that's the size that fit my journal. And then I used a piece of tracing paper and a piece of um, page from a, a lined page from a journal or notebook. I like tracing paper because it's inexpensive and because it accepts stain so well. Vellum is awesome, but it's a little less forgiving. And um, I don't mean stain, I mean coffee dye. I stick this in the um, a vat of coffee or a tray of coffee, basically, and it just absorbs the coffee real well. And then I straighten it or flatten it the same way I did on episode 10. I put it in that press that I've made. And it's durable, sturdy, and it tears really easily. So that's what I used. Of course, you're welcome to use what you have and what you like. It doesn't require any of those specific things. If I had a smaller journal, I'd just simply use a smaller page. Um, but the nice thing about using the 12 inch length is that you've got a good solid pocket on both sides. So I think even if I were doing a smaller book, I would still work with a 12 inch, um, I guess width would be rather than length. I'd work with a 12 inch width. And so the way you do this is quite simply, you cut your 12 by 12 paper down into whatever size you want. Um, I used it like this. And then you just decide what you want to be your front piece. And then you make a couple scores. Now I've already pre-punched this because this is my fourth, fifth time making this video. People walked in, the dogs were barking. It's just crazy around here. So um, that's why the divots are already here. But I'll do the same thing on the bottom section of it because it really doesn't matter if you're working with a seven inch piece or a five inch piece. And um, okay, I just put my scoreboard down and I don't, oh, here we go. Sorry. So on this particular project, you, I'm scoring it for a 12 inch piece. Um, if you were working with a different size piece, you're going to, you know, obviously need to score it at different lengths. But the first score I make is at two and a quarter. And that gives me this piece. This gives gives me this top little section. Where did I put that? Oh, here it, here it is. It gives me the top section. So I'm going to score that at two and a quarter. And this goes around back and on the underside. So I'll score that at two and a quarter. And then what I do, simply because it makes it easier for me to understand what I'm doing, I know that this is the front or the top, and I'll fold it over right then and there. As soon as I score it, I flip it over. And now mentally, I'm working with the back. And it just makes it a little bit easier for me to remember what it is I'm doing and, and which pieces I want to score where. And my next score mark will be at three and a quarter, and then again at six and a half. And again, that's if I'm using a 12 inch sheet of paper, which I am. So I've got three score lines, two and a quarter, flipped it over, and then three and a quarter and six and a half. And the way this essentially works is you fold it down on the second score line. And this piece will be, where did I put it here? It is. This piece will be on the top. And then these pieces will be on the back. And the way they're going to work is it's kind of a, a trifold and did I did I score that correctly let's see yeah, just like that and that's pretty much how it fits so those those are your score marks and then I'll show you with this one um, the one that I've already folded 
basically how I did it. So I used the tracing paper to make the second pocket and I pre-sewed this simply because when I'm gluing this down on my page or sewing it down on my page, because of the book that I'm working in, I couldn't sew it um, in because it would show through on the other side and I don't want it to. So I sew it here and that way when I glue it down, the glue doesn't show. And before I would glue it down, I would take it to my machine and I would sew along the top and along the bottom. And that gives me the front pocket and the back pocket. Okay. And then that goes down just like this. Then the back side, I am going to take, here's my front side and I'm going to take the divot. Well, here we go. See, I'm doing, yeah, this is the short piece. I am going to take the divot here just so I don't make a mistake. Now I would you can eyeball this, certainly. I would probably get a, an approximation where two and a half is, so that it's in the center. But this is going to be my, my front piece. And then I've got these pieces left. Now, these two pieces are going to go together. I'm going to end up gluing panels. This is one, which is on the front. Panel two, panel three, and panel four. And panels two and three are going to get glued together. So what I've done here on this particular one is I just took some of that tracing paper and the tracing paper, here's a sample, tracing paper tears really easily, I mean, really easily. So I'll line it up on my grid. Um, I wanted this at two and three, two and three quarters because of the size page that I had um, worked with. So I'll line it up and then I'll hold this in place after I'm sure it's straight and I'll tear. And it tears, you can see the edge. It's a beautiful torn edge on both of them. Uh, it's easy and it's quick. So I tore the edge for the back of this and then I made it myself a pocket. Now before I glued anything, I on panel two, I sewed on my pocket. And I could easily take a divot here if I wanted to, or in this case, I chose to have a pocket because remember panels two and three are gonna be glued together. So I chose to take my divot out of panel three. You could take a divot out of panel two and it would be on your top instead. It really doesn't matter. And you don't even have to take it. You could do a divot. You could do lined paper on all three sections if you wanted to. It just depends on what your need is and how much writing space you want. I happen to like tuck some pockets, so I made a tuck in a pocket. So I took a divot out of panel three. Now I also took a divot out of the bottom of it so that I could have it go all the way through or put two different pockets in there. But that is a personal choice. And so then I glue along the side and the bottom if I'm closing it off. Well, this one I didn't close off, so I didn't close the bottom. I just glued along the side and that fits in my book here like this. And then I created my pocket here. And then on this one, the one in the sample, I just put writing paper on, but this one I put two more pockets. And so if you were wanting pockets, you could certainly put them there and put them in before you glue your paper down. If you were wanting writing paper in the back, I just sew the pockets on first and then glue the writing paper on top like so. And then the writing paper on this side. You don't have to by any means. You can glue this down and make, you know, a couple more pockets here, either at the top or on the side, but you've got it adhered on the front. So you don't have to worry about this coming up. And that just gave me one more section of places to write. So I would go like this and like this. And that is really all there is to it. Here is a mostly completed one um, and it's inked and sewn simply so you can see it. And here is the front with pocket and pocket. And then here is the back with pocket, double pocket in this particular case. Um, let's see, these two pockets right here, here and here. And then on the back, I've got the journaling, the writing paper and on the page, when I, once I'd glued it in, I would do the same thing. I would use this to glue it down and put writing paper. And the sample that I had included in my book, I, sorry, I've got other samples that are up upcoming projects. I just took a scrap of cardstock and before I glued this piece down, I tucked the scrap of cardstock behind it and flipped it over, put a little Velcro dot on the top and on the tag, and that just holds it closed. So 
there you go. That is episode 11. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope I gave you some ideas. Ah, I almost forgot. My original idea came from, I believe it was Carol Laws, um, a fold video that she had done. Now, mine ended up looking quite different, but I got the idea um, from her, so I am going to make an attempt to attach that video in my description box. All right, take care and happy crafting.